Hello. So today I want to talk about the Atom Micro Panel. Bit of a demonstration on how I use it. Is it expensive for what it is? What is it? And is it worth it? First of all, basically the Atom Micro Panel is an expensive stream deck. Or you might say it's actually not expensive if you compare it to the Stream Deck Studio, which costs more than an Atom Micro Panel. Then again, you have less buttons on an Atom Micro Panel and you have more specialized buttons on an Atom Micro Panel. Let me explain. The first thing we need to do is we need to plug the Atom Micro Panel in. And that's done before you start Atom Software Control. The Atom Micro Panel looks like this when you are using it with Atom Software Control. So what I've done here at the moment, I've sacrificed camera input 20 and I put the super source on there. So you can see number 10 is blinking red and that means that number 20 is program. As you can see on my view there, the super source is the program. So I've mapped that to put 20 for now. And you can also see that camera 2 is the preview. So camera two is my full view of the office here. The blinking I found quite a bit annoying, not great. And you can see I have an upstream here on. That's my DVE that turns the uh, the image. Because otherwise it would be upside down. That's just the way the camera is mounted. I'm using an Atom 4ME Broadcast Studio 4K at the moment. The Atom software control is running on a on a Windows box, which the, the Atom micro panel is connected to. And if you use it like this, it's great for the big rack-mounted Atom switches. It might be overkill for an Atom Mini or an Atom Extreme, so it wouldn't necessarily make any sense. But what happened with a Companion version 3.4.2 is that they actually added support for the active micro panel and treat it as a regular surface and that makes a whole lot of a difference so i was able to to make some optimizations by going down that route the other thing that you can't do with the atom micro panel is you have no audio control you can't control any audio with this and you also have no control over which camera outputs which video feeds go to your aux ports on on your atom switcher these are all things that you actually can realize by using it with companion so let me plug this around and we'll go over to companion so the the other thing people were unhappy about with the eight micro panel is that it has no Ethernet connection, so you're always bound to have it near a Windows PC or a Mac running the Atom software control. You can either connect it by cable or Bluetooth, so you can use it wirelessly, but it means you have to have Atom software control running somewhere. By going down the companion route, that changes, because now with um, 343, there's even support for companion Pi, so you can basically connect the Atom Micro Panel to a Raspberry Pi 4 and then run Companion on that. And that way it becomes headless. So you can take it anywhere within the network and just connect it. And you don't need a dedicated PC with Atom Software Control there. The other advantage now is that you have multiple steps that you can do on every button press. This is basically like a Stream Deck. Let me show you how, how, how it looks like after you connected the Atom Micro Panel to your companion. So we are in the configuration page here. The first thing you need to do is you need to go to settings. And the important thing is that you enable connected Blackmagic Atom Micro Panel, you enable that here, then you restart companion and you can't run Atom Software Control at the same time on that PC or in my case, that's not even the case because I'm running it at the moment on a Raspberry Pi. So the next thing you do is you rescan for USB and a Blackmagic device will turn up. That is the Blackmagic Atom Micro Panel. Then in the settings, what I have specifically have done is I've put page uh, startup page 20 in here and um, that's where I've put, where I've put my pages. And then we go to the buttons and on page 20, I had to relocate the up and down 
buttons. So for every row, let me just uh, get this in here on. So you see for, for every row here, there's a row up here for every one of these buttons. And when I, for example, let's see if I press on cam one, I basically set the program output to input one. And you might, not, might notice that I'm actually using mix effect to do this. Under my uh, atom micro panel, you can control multiple MEs. ME one, two, four, I have four MEs. The problem is if you use the companion atom module, you have to specify DME that you want to set, which would mean I would have to create a page or more pages for every single ME. By using mix effect instead of the atom module and piping it through that, which I have mix effect running anyway, I now have the option of saying selected ME. So that makes it a lot easier and I'm basically down to two pages. The other thing that you get, and as you can see here on the picture, or let me show you on the Atom Micro Panel again, I have purple and I could go Shift 9 and orange. With Companion, I cannot blink the buttons. But what I figured out was that I can set colors and that I have actually more colors available. So if you look here in Feedbacks and I click here, the colors that are available are white, red, orange, yellow, sort of yellow, like th there isn't really a difference there, green, blue, and purple. So for camera outputs 11 to 20, I have used purple for program and yellow or orange for preview. That means it's less distracting than it is when the button is blinking and I still know if I'm on camera 1 to 10 or on camera 11 to 20. So works a little better for me. Let's go back to 2 here so I don't forget that later on. So that's one of the things that I've done. So you can now fully freely assign every single button on these as you see fit. Even the T-bar works. Not quite the same as it does with the Atom software control, but you can use it. The other thing I, for example, have done is um, I have obviously mapped, tried to map everything as it is when it's an Atom software control. The only thing I can't get feedback on the moment are background key 1, key 2, key 3, and key 4. I have chatted with Adam Tau about that, and we will see if we can get the feedbacks for those also into mix effect. The downstream keys, obviously, those are only on ME1 when you use them. And if I, for example, go here, I have my logos coming up there in the top, right? And fade that out again. That works absolutely no problem. Auto and cut work the same way as before. You have your transitions, mix, wipe, dip, DVE, and sting. Arm is normally not used, but we get to that. You have your four MEs up here. You have your macro. On Atom Software Control, when you hold macro down, these 10 would light up in blue, and then you could basically do 10 macros. And I believe with macro and shift, you could get another 10. I've gone beyond that. So the way this now is set up is that I have cameras 1 to 10 here as program. Cameras so 1 to 10 here as preview. And I have... Uh, Super source, I put that on previous transition. And the way I did that was if I press it now, it's just going to be preview. And if I press it with sh after shift, it will be program. I obviously have the, uh, the transitions, the DSKs. Let's switch to ME2 so I don't screw up my recording because I'm actually recording on ME1. We're on ME2 now. Uh, let me switch the uh, Atom control software also. Again, you can see on ME2, we have the Super Sources program here and Cam2 is for I have the same basic set as over on, on, on uh, ME1. Now, if I press Shift, before you would have to hold Shift to press a button, I've made it that you can basically go and you, you can then select your camera and it will switch back to non-shifted. So let's say I'm switching uh, to camera 18 for, for the program. Here's another thing 
that we can't do at the moment. I can't get feedback for the transitions for ME2, 3, and 4. I can only get the feedback for ME1. Again, something I've asked Adam To if we can see if we can get that. So that might come into mix effect at some point. The other thing I've done with, um, with Shift, so let me swap this back. So if you notice over here in this section, so you have dip, DVE, sting, mix, wipe, and audio. I have some audio pages here. We'll get to that. So if I press Shift now, It, the ATEM micro panel jumps to page 21. And as you can see now, the block of six has changed to aux one to aux six here. So I click on dip, which is aux one. And we then go to page 31, which is where it has jumped. And you can now see that this is aux one. And I have basically all cameras from one to 20. I've also set black and bars and media player one to four. And then here on the other side, I have super source, I have ME one, two, three, four, and I have aux one to six. So as I switch around, you can see that aux one is black background in this case. And aux two, I have ME one selected, ME uh, aux 3 is ME1, aux 4 is ME1, aux 5 is ME1, aux 6 is ME1. So I can go and I can select all the cameras and send them out to the aux, or I can send the program feeds for ME1, ME2, ME3, ME4 to the aux, right? Now, if I want to exit this again, I just press the aux that's active, and that brings me to the first page. So we're back to page 20 then let's see 20 okay and here comes the next one audio audio jumps me to page 25 let's see here so if i go and i use the arm button that jumps me to page 25 and you can see I have uh, basically mapped every camera audio, every VSDI channel that I have on, on, on the ATEM, and I've mapped them to a button from 1 to 20. That will obviously not give me the XLR and the RC and a few other things, but just a minute. Now, the problem is that you have auto follow video and you have on. So I have green for auto follow video, and I have read for on. And if I swap to, hang on a second. If I swap the uh, item over to audio, it gives you a better idea so you can see what's going on here. And then we go back into the audio settings. You can see seven, eight and nine down here. So if I press number seven, which is my Matchwell NDI receiver, and you can see the auto follow video is on here, right? Press that. Oh, I pressed both at the same time, so we'll just put this one back on again. So you can see that now it's off, right? I hold the button for two seconds, it goes green. You can see it's back and it's on again. If I hold the button for four seconds, you can see it's now on. And the reason I had to do that was, first of all, you can't toggle auto follow video. And I wanted to use one button for both functionalities. And I just do that in colors then. The other thing is then I have shift. We hold shift down. And that's my media player one, two, three, four. And then I have my uh, XLR here. And I have my RCA here. The media players. I still have to hold them two seconds, but they can only do auto follow video. The RCA and the XLR, they can only go on and off. So I made that into a single button press. So if I want to go out of audio settings again, I just press arm again, and then I'm out. Just back to the switcher. 
and we are in mix effects one. So the other thing then where I was saying about macros, uh, the ATEM software control combined with the ATEM micro panel only allows you to switch 20 macros. I figured, why not do more? So if I press macro, now I have 20 macros, one to 20. Press macro again, different color, now it's purple instead of blue. That's macros 21, 21 to 40. Press again, macro is red. That's macros 41 to 60. So 60 macros, press again. We're back on the first page. Back to the T-bar. So if I go and I say... The T-bar can be configured in a way where basically where you go and you go to surfaces, go to settings, and you can see here the variable to store the T-bar status in. I don't have it set up here right now. I have it on my other setup. So you, you create a custom variable here in custom variables. Create a variable for it. Create one. Add one here, here. So by an atom T bar. Add. Okay, we have now an atom internal custom T bar. We then go to surfaces again. We go to settings. And we select the atom custom T bar. Okay. Go back to variables. Let me show you this. It is one. And it is zero. So you can basically do something like that. And what, what you do then is you can create a trigger. Um, add a trigger. Atom. T-bar. Event. Uh, on variable change. We use the T-bar variable. Internal custom T bar. So what I do is then I use the again I use the uh, mix effect transition auto. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to use the selected me and the condition I do an and variable check value T bar. One. Oh, sorry, no, I want an or. I want this to do whenever I do it anyhow. So add event, add condition. I want an or. So what happens now is that when, when this event happens, and if the variable is one or zero, it will do an auto transition. We enable this. And as you can see, I can now auto fade. So yeah, that's uh, basically we, we can, I can show this again. I basically, I move this up and whoops, to take my DSK off. That's basically how you get the T-bar to work. You can't program it as a button, but you can, use triggers and variables to make it work. Here are the downsides. So as I said, there's, there's certain keys that we don't have a feedback yet. Now that's going to be fixed. The other thing is that companion satellite does not support the IH micro panel yet. That would really be the biggest thing. If, if that is implemented, it becomes even more versatile. But already now, there is a whole lot more you can get out of the item, item micro panel if you use it with companion instead of using it with the item software control. So I hope this video was helpful. If so, give us a like and um, I'll see you in another one. Bye.